This is Tom and Paula Graves from Light of Christ Radio. And we are here with a story of faith that will give you and your group light for your journey of life. Today we continue our series, Faith Makes a Difference, with the story of Barak from Judges chapter 4 and 5. But before we tell the story, we want to give you the context of the story. After the defeat of Jericho, the army of Israel continued to take possession of the land with God's help. However, they didn't take as much as God had told them. This allowed the Canaanite culture to continue to influence the people of God. Instead of obeying God, the people would do what they thought was best. God would allow foreign oppression until His people turned back to Him. Before our story happens, the people have strayed from worshiping the true God. As a result, God allowed the Canaanites to oppress and attack the nation of Israel. This story is told twice, once in prose in Judges 4, and again in poetry in Judges 5. Each includes different details. We've combined these two stories into one in hopes that the story will be easier to understand. Now that you have the context of the story, simply listen to the story as we tell it. Close your Bibles and try to picture yourself in the story. Listen carefully, because after the story is told, you'll be asked to retell the story. Don't worry. We think reading the Bible text is important, too. Be patient, and we'll get there. But for now, please simply close your Bibles and listen. And now, a story from the Word of God. The people did what the Lord said was wrong, and the Lord allowed the king of Cana to defeat the Israelites. A man named Cicero was the commander of this king's army, and he had 900 iron chariots. He was very cruel to the Israelites for 20 years, so they cried to the Lord for help. There was a woman prophetess named Deborah. She was a judge of Israel and considered herself mother to the nation. She held court at a palm tree located about 10 miles north of what would become Jerusalem. The Israelites came and asked her what they should do with the problem of Sisera. He had blocked the major trade routes and impoverished the economy. His army attacked the Israelites when they were defenseless and captured and raped their women. Deborah sent a message to a man named Barak and asked him to come to meet with her. Barak lived in an area which Sisera was raiding. Barak traveled a dangerous 70-mile journey to reach Deborah. When they met, she told him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go and gather 10,000 men from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun. Lead them to Mount Tabor. I will make Sisera, the commander of the Canaanite army, come to the Kishon River below Mount Tabor, and I'll help you defeat Sisera there. Then Barak said to Deborah, I will go and do this if you will go with me. But if you'll not go with me, I will not go. Of course I'll go with you, Deborah answered. But because of your attitude, you will not be honored when Sisera is defeated. The Lord will allow a woman to defeat Sisera. So Deborah went with Barak to his hometown. There Barak called the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali together. He gathered 10,000 men to follow him from these tribes, and Deborah also went with him. Later, volunteers from four more tribes of Israel joined these men, and the army would grow to 40,000 men. But the rest of the tribes refused to send fighting men. Someone told Sisera that Barak was at Mount Tabor. So Sisera gathered his 900 iron chariots and all the men with them, and they marched south to the Kishon River near Mount Tabor. Then Deborah said to Barak, Today, the Lord will help you defeat Sisera. Surely, you know that the Lord has already cleared the way for you. So Barak led 10,000 men down from Mount Tabor. Barak and his men attacked Sisera. During the battle, the Lord confused Sisera and his army and chariots. God's intervention took the form of an unseasonable rain, which turned the dry riverbed of the Kishon into a raging torrent. Their chariots did not work on the muddy ground, and they did not know what to do. Even though Barak's army lacked proper weapons, they defeated Sisera's army with God's help. Barak and the full army chased Sisera's army as they tried to escape, and they destroyed it. And meanwhile, Sisera deserted and tried to escape to the safety of his home. Along the way, there was a family that had descended from the father-in-law of Moses. This man had made a peace treaty with the king of Cana. Sisera was exhausted and thought this would be a safe place. Jael, the wife, saw Sisera coming, so she went out to meet him and said, Sir, come into my tent. Come in, don't be afraid. So Sisera went into Jael's tent, and she covered him with a blanket. But first, Sisera asked Jael for a drink of water. Jael had some milk in a container made from animal skin. So she gave him a drink of milk and then covered him up. Then Sisera said to Jael, Go stand at the entrance to the tent. 
If anyone comes and asks you, is anyone in there, say no. But J.L. found a tent peg and a hammer. She quietly went to Sisera. He was very tired and was sleeping. She put the tent peg to the side of Sisera's head and hit it with a hammer. The tent peg went through the side of his head into the ground and Sisera died. Just then, Barak came by Jael's tent, looking for Sisera. Jael went out to meet Barak and said, Come in here, and I will show you a man you are looking for. So Barak entered the tent with Jael. There he found Sisera lying on the ground with the tent peg through the side of his head. On that day, God defeated the king of Cana for the Israelites. Deborah and Barak sang a song of praise, and there was peace in the land for 40 years. A story from the word of God. Now that you've listened to the story, try to retell it from what you heard. Then read the text. Discussion questions are found below this video in the Show More section. It is our prayer that these stories of faith from Hebrews 11 will strengthen your faith. Be blessed. Be blessed.